So I put it to you that Zhao Wei was outed as a foreign spy, not by your government, but by the Globe and Mail. Um. It was Justin Trudeau's turn on the stand at the public inquiry for foreign interference today. And for someone who loves to talk about misinformation and not playing politics, he sure took the opportunity to try to do both. Let's take a look. And I'll just ask you, Prime Minister, to, to take us through from your recollection uh, what happened here, what the situation was, and, and what was done about it. Um, in, in paragraph 26, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, I received uh, what I characterize here as explosive, certainly extremely alarming uh, information around foreign interference uh, into a particular political party. Uh, and I uh, directed, um, I directed CSIS to try and, or the intelligence agencies to um, to try and ensure that the uh, opposition parties uh, had the tools to respond to um, these allegations or had at least the information that would allow them to do this. I have to be really careful about what I say here because this is all very, very sensitive and um, even talking about which party these allegations aimed at is something I'm trying to avoid doing. Fair enough. Um, and I won't ask you many more questions about them because we are treading very thin lines here. Uh, the only thing I'll, I'll just sum up by saying, so essentially information came to your attention and it was through the system put to the right people in the right places. I think it is perhaps useful to point out, we don't need to pull it up, but in the, well, two things. First of all, okay. Before Captain Stutters uh, continues there, a um, couple things here. I find it very interesting that he is taking the stance. Now, for those of you that were able to read paragraph 26, what it talks about is um, there is allegedly some explosive intelligence that came forward about foreign interference that could be used to embarrass one of the opposition parties, something like that. Um, and I find it interesting that Trudeau is essentially saying, oh, well, you know, I, I, I have to be very careful. This is sensitive and I can't, uh, I can't name the party. Meanwhile, a couple months ago, they had no problem talking about intelligence that was brought forth from CSIS questioning the Conservative Party of Canada's leadership campaign in some alleged year. They didn't say who, they didn't say when, and they didn't say who was involved, but you had no problem talking about that sensitive, you know, intelligence in the House of Commons, but now all of a sudden it's sensitive here. Well, it's because they're using the sensitivity as a shield of sorts. They're trying to make it seem like it's this conservative leader because they said it was a conservative leadership campaign, but they didn't tell you, was it Pierre's? Was it O'Toole's? Was it Shears? Was it before that? They won't say, right? It, it's, uh, it's up to you to fill in the blanks. And if you already don't like Pierre Polyev, you're probably filling in the blanks that it was his leadership race, right? Um, the other thing they're doing now is the exact same thing in that they're saying, oh, it was an opposition party. Is it the NDP? Is it the Conservatives? Is, is it, it the, the Green Party? Is it the Bloc? Is it the Marxist-Leninist party? Is it the Rhino party? Who knows, right? Like your brain, if you're already biased against the Conservatives, that's where your brain's gonna go, right? I'm Prime Minister, so I receive tremendous amount of uh, classified information covering a broad range of individuals uh, across this country, including in different political parties. But as leader of the Liberal Party, um, it is awkward, to say the least, to use a mild word, for me to be um, engaging in um, 
who should run or what consequences or who should be a critic or who should be in what position for an opposition party. Uh, so my, as you pointed out earlier, the answer was to offer classified briefings to um, all the leaders of the parties so that they could best be positioned to take the necessary actions to protect their MPs, some of whom might be vulnerable, some of whom might be witting or unwitting uh, around foreign interference, and therefore demonstrate the um, demonstrate to Canadians that the integrity of their parties and the protection of their parties from federal uh, foreign interference was uh, was done. So this answer is very interesting because he doesn't talk about whether the party leaders would have had to get the NSACOP security clearance, meaning they wouldn't be allowed to talk about this uh, under penalty of jail, or if this was just a one-off security briefing about what was going on, because those are completely different things. Um, for example, Michael Chong was given a security briefing after you know it exploded in, in the press about the fact that Michael Chong's um, you know, family was under threat from the uh, People's Republic of China. So given the fact that he was kind of allowed to talk about it to a degree means that, you know, he wasn't gag bound by, by that. So I imagine he received a completely different type of briefing and wasn't under the gag order of the NSACOP. Well, let's go back to committee a second because... If you guys remember, Jagmeet let it slip that Han Dong's name was on that list. So Oh, that in, was that was in front of Parliament too. Yeah, so. it, but but in committee, Garnet Jenis was inquiring, I believe it was to the RCMP chief. <laughs> yeah, whether Jagmeet would be prosecuted. <laughs> right, whether he should be prosecuted. He, he did it in a roundabout way so as not to call out Jagmeet, but essentially if one could be prosecuted for divulging that sort of information and if memory serves the answer was yes you absolutely could be prosecuted so i think that gives us our answer in terms of clearance right and that's that was all I can know about it i don't act on that stuff because i don't believe in the partisan using national security information for partisan purposes nor should any prime minister but informing the leader so they can take proper actions um is I think the right way of doing things. <sighs> Stepping away from this specific example, because I don't want to weigh into we this can take it down. example. Because I am prime minister and privy to all these informations, I have the names of a number of parliamentarians, former parliamentarians and or candidates in the Conservative Party of Canada who uh, are engaged or at high risk of or for whom there is clear intelligence around foreign interference. And I have directed CSIS and others to try and inform the Conservative Party leader to um, be warned and armed to be able to make decisions that protect the integrity of that party, of its members, from attempts at for act activities around foreign interference. So here's the thing, Trudeau, and you know this full well, you're just trying to pull the wool over Canadians' eyes. But let me explain it for everybody, um, because the Prime Minister is not being completely truthful right now, um, that if Pierre Polyev were to take this special clearance and look at this file, then he is completely bound from doing anything about it. If the prime minister wants to release the information to the public, well, then he can do that because he's the prime minister. If Pierre Polyev wants to wait until he's prime minister so that he then gets 
uh, he gets a security clearance as prime minister and then gets to see this information and then wants to either do something about this information or he wants to release this information to the public, then he's able to do that. But if he gets the security clearance right now as leader of the official opposition, he cannot reprimand anybody who's in his party. He can't kick them out. He can't call the cops on them. He can't do anything. Yeah. Um, and what happened to not wanting to name the party because it's sensitive, Trudeau? What happened to that? Well, he's not naming the party who, who committed the interference uh, or the MP belonged to who is suspected of committing the interference, but he's really making true, um, pardon me, he's really making Pierre out to be the scapegoat. Well, but he's, he's naming the Conservative Party of Canada, allegedly having all this foreign interference, you know, going on with, with parliamentarians. No, parliamentarians, that could mean senators, that could mean MPs, that could mean former senators, that could be former MPs. So that's that's what they they mean by when when they say parliamentarians. But you know, given there's a very small number of uh, conservatives actually in the Senate, there's a much lower likelihood of of the fact that there's actually people in the Senate that are conservative that are under the influence of foreign states. But re regardless of that, um, Tanya is completely right. The problem, and this is why. Uh, Pierre Polyev is not getting this clearance. And there's so much, you know, all of his opponents online are like, see, he's compromised. That's he why can't he's get the clearance, like, guys. He's going to be the next prime minister. Yeah, I'm he pretty sure it'll be all right. can get that clearance. He's just not doing it now for this particular case because he'll be gagged. He won't be able to do anything. He won't be able to tell anyone who those 11 MPs are. Right, and and technically Jagmeet was not allowed to actually say Han Dong you know, was one of these people because right. he could and should have been arrested. But gee, I wonder why that didn't happen. Um, the other problem, uh, as Tony said, so let's say, let's just say, for example, that Pierre got the clearance and he was told that one of his MPs in his, like the senior shadow cabinet, one of his senior shadow cabinet MPs was actively collaborating with a foreign state. Guess what Pierre Polyev would be able to do as a result of that? Nothing. Why? Because he he signed this release basically saying he cannot do anything. Now, you know, they'll try and say, well, you know, he, he'd be able to take like other steps. No, he wouldn't. He would not. This not is, as leader of the opposition. This is what Trudeau's Tr Trudeau's argument is. And then he, he also says, well, you know, he'd be able to like, you know, try and find other evidence and then act on that. No, no, he would not. You can't. And see, this is why I think he that Pierre is making a smart decision by waiting. Again, if he takes the clearance now, learns those 11 names, and one of those people is currently in his, uh, in his caucus, he won't be able to do anything. However, if he waits to become prime minister finds out one of those 11 people are in his caucus, then he can act on the information. Or what if one of, uh, what if he somehow finds out what one of these names are through some sort of leak or something like that? Then he can do guess something. Guess what he can, yeah, because it's not him that has signed that release. He can then absolutely do something. And this is the thing. Trudeau then says, oh, well, you know, I, I have these names implying that this is all the conservatives. Well, I'm sure many of you probably saw this because we posted this on our Facebook, we posted this on, on X, and other people picked it up. Pierre posted it on his uh, socials. Um, he issued this huge long statement very shortly after Trudeau made these ridiculous comments. Um, while Trudeau was on the stand, he released this. And it essentially said, go ahead, release the names. I freaking dare you. Right, because, because I guarantee you there is a extremely low likelihood that there's conservatives on that list. And if there are, then I will trash them. Absolutely trash them, remove them from the party. Like that's basically what he was saying. And then he goes through this long list of all the things that Trudeau didn't do. Because this this hearing is four hours long. Some of the things that he kept being asked over and over and over and over again is what about this? Well, that never made it to me. Well, what about this? Well, that never made it to me. And then apparently Trudeau was doing such a great job, as he keeps telling us, of handling foreign interference because he set up all these committees and all, like, all this crap that nothing ever made it to his desk that they actually had to change the way 
communication actually happened. So now he says, well, you know, we made a change and everything makes it to my desk. Okay, so, but you just, you don't read anything, right, Katie Telford? Well, I want to back up a minute here, though, and have a discussion about what if Trudeau did release those names? What if there are conservatives on that list and he did release those names? Um, either he's going to be releasing the list of everybody, which there may be some liberals on there. And in fact, we suspect that there was one former liberal on there. Thanks, Jagmeet. But say, for example, and I'm just throwing numbers out here. This isn't true. This is just me making up a scenario. Um, but say that there's three conservatives on there. Say Trudeau releases only the names of those three conservatives. Then everybody's going to assume that the other eight are all liberals. Absolutely. So this is why he can't release those names. Like, or, or I should say, this is why he won't release those names. Because even if there's one conservative on that list and the rest are liberal, Trudeau's screwed. Yeah, like what if, there, what if there's two conservatives, they're not in parliament anymore. And, and yeah, and, and that's all they release. Tanya's right, because they're, it everyone's going to say, awful. okay, so the rest of them are liberals. Thanks very much. And you know what? And if there are conservatives on there, go after them, arrest their asses, throw them in jail. But all 11 could be liberals. We don't know. That's the thing. We don't know. And Canadians, I feel, have a right to know. So Justin Trudeau should do the right thing by releasing those names so we know who we're voting for. And I should, I should, you know, kind of temper my comments because there needs to be a trial, there needs to be evidence, there needs to be all this stuff, there needs to be due process to, to ensure that everyone gets their day in court. But assuming that it's all true, then throw the asses in jail. Well, when you're talking about criminality, sure, but I think that CSIS obviously has intelligence to have these 11 names on a list. So Canadians deserve to know because, I mean, Canadians will choose to either continue to vote for that person or to not vote for that person. Well, and the NCCOP report clearly states they were either wittingly or unwittingly collaborating with foreign states. So Canadians absolutely deserve to know who is representing them and who is representing a foreign state. And the decision by the leader of the Conservative Party to not get those classified briefings means that nobody in his party, not him, um, and, and nobody in a position of power knows the names of these individuals and can take appropriate action. It also means nobody's there to stand up for those individuals if the in intelligence is shoddy or, or, or incomplete or just allegations from a single source. Um, and that is something that, that, as you've seen, we are ready to question intelligence when it comes towards the Liberal Party members because we need to make sure if you're going to end someone's career, you're doing it in a responsible way. Yeah, it's real convenient for Trudeau to say that. Well, you know, in the Liberal Party... Justin Trudeau is not bound by that NSACOP release, so he can say whatever the heck he wants. Right, he could tell Pierre Polyev the names of everybody on that list, and then Pierre would be able to do whatever he wanted with that information. He could go to the media, he could go to his caucus and remove anybody who may be in there, he can um, go to the party and remove anybody who maybe was an MP and is still a conservative member, not an MP anymore, but just a member of the party and have them removed from the party. Like there's so many things that Pierre could do if Trudeau gave him the information. If it comes directly from the prime minister, because the prime minister has the option of sharing that information. And, and why is that? Because Trudeau mandated that this be the process. Right. So he's, he knew Trudeau knew that Pierre would not fall for this, that Pierre would not be muzzled, that he would not fall into this trap of, oh, well, you know, you need security clearance and then we'll give you this information. But, oh, by the way, you won't be able to do anything about it or talk to anybody about it. So it's kind of a moot point. Well, I don't I don't know if he knew. I, I think he hoped he, he'd be able to get him to cave to the pressure that they were trying to create in the House of Commons by everyone on the Liberal side and the NDP side calling him out, trying to say, oh, yeah, see, the Conservative leader won't, won't get the briefing. And Pierre's like, no, I know exactly what this is. It's a trap. And it's not going to happen. And if Trudeau was that concerned, this is what you have to ask yourself. If Trudeau was that concerned about these, these exp 
explosive allegations about these people in the Conservative Party. If he was that concerned about foreign interference, he would have gone to Pierre himself and right. he would have said, Pierre, buddy, listen, partisanship aside, you need to know this. You need to take some action immediately because this is what's going on. Well, and that's assuming that there are any conservatives on that list. Right. 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 And that's the key. Right. So he's saying, well, you know, you know, he can't take action now. Well, yeah, he, he can't take action. And he's even saying, well, you know, and, and, and people in positions of power. So let's say Andrew Shear went to the NCCOP committee. Andrew Shear learns all of this stuff. Andrew Shear can come back and have a conversation with Pierre and said, yep, I learned some stuff. And that's all he can say. He can't say yeah. what, and he can't tell Pierre. Well, that's because there are conservatives on the NCCOP committee who know those names, right. but they're not permitted to say anything. Right. And you cannot do anything as a result of the information that you get from NCCOP, period. Right. Who set those rules? Justin Trudeau's government. But Justin Trudeau, because he set the rules, He's not bound by those rules. He has a different level of security clearance and he's not going to be prosecuted if he releases the names. That's why, that's why the conservatives can't do anything. The NDP can't do anything. The bloc can't do anything in terms of these 11 MP names being released. Well, even, even the liberals can't do anything. It's only Justin Trudeau. Well, and if memory serves, the bloc also refused the security clearance. They did. did. Not? They did. What, so why is Trudeau not going after Yves Blanchet? Because... There was at one point, um, <laughs> Justin Trudeau said, well, Yves Blanchet is not going to be Prime Minister of Canada. So why does that Here matter? There you go. Why does that matter, right? It, it matters because of politics. And Tony and I were talking about this the like shortly after it happened. This smells so badly of a snap election coming and this being Justin Trudeau's smear platform for that snap election. This seems like a Hail Mary in the middle of the public in inquiry and he's dropping this bomb to try and then ride this into an election because he's trying to just divert all attention away from all the scandals that are, that's going on and he's trying to create a bigger scandal around the conservative party that that smells like what's happening right now and you've seen that the the rebel liberal caucus is not lying down they've seen what trudeau was trying to do by changing the page on the news narrative they're not having it so they actually sent one of their guys out to say hey by the way i'm publicly saying trudeau sucks and that he should set down <laughs> um so everything is working against justin trudeau and the walls are closing in and this feels like a hail mary pass um the problem is it's going to be incomplete anyway um so that was that was Justin Trudeau. He goes on and on and on about Pierre and how we should you know get the um, the, clearance. the clearance and how he's bewildered why he wouldn't do that. Well, we've just ex you know spent some time explaining why. We hope it's clear, but now we're gonna jump to um, probably probably I would say our our favorite lawyer uh, of the public inquiry because this guy has the most soothing voice. He does. I wish he would like read me bedtime stories. Yeah. He's pleasant to listen to. Michael, he's got a voice for radio. I swear. He's, <laughs> he's like the white version of Morgan Freeman. Like his, his voice is phenomenal. Um, so he must, he must actually be an effective trial lawyer because the jury must just say, sure, keep talking. I believe everything you say. My client was here in September and gave evidence to the commissioner. And one of the concerns that he expressed is that this country has become, in his words, a playground for foreign interference by states like PRC and India. Uh, Mr. Medicino uh, was here last week and disputed that phrase, playground of foreign interference. Given the revelations by the RCMP and by you, sir, on Monday, isn't Mr. Mr. Chong's assessment closer to the mark than Mr. Mendicino's? Uh, no, I think it, enforce, it reinforces how wrong Mr. Chong is, because what this week has been all about is demonstrating the capacity and the reality that Canada has been both detecting foreign interference and acting on it. After I would suggest fact. that knowing about this and revealing it to the public and creating um, diplomatic malaise, to put it lightly, uh, is an example of us pushing back strongly against uh, attempts at interference in this country. Uh, not just attempts, sir, successful interference. 
<laughs> um, so there you have it, folks. <laughs> All right. So the opening salvo from Michael Chung's lawyer is, okay, so basically what this seems like, and CSIS has even said it, you have foreign allies even saying it, that Canada is a playground for foreign interference because of the low risk of, of detection and the low risk of retribution and consequences. That's actually been been said in a CSIS report based on just China. So. Michael Chong is essentially saying, okay, so last week Mendocino was here and he said, oh, oh, no, I don't, I don't think that's it at all. And so his lawyer was like, okay, so given the fact that you chose to have this big press conference and say, oh, look at all this foreign interference that's going on from India, um, wouldn't you think that that is actually the case? And Trudeau's like, no, because we've detected it. And then Chong, Chong's lawyer rebuts right at the end. He's like, but you haven't prevented it. It's been allowed to happen. And Trudeau's like, well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that's the first punch in the face for Trudeau in, in this exchange. Confirmed this morning uh, that your government's assessment of the PRC's targeting of Michael Chong and his relations in Hong Kong uh, is not foreign interference, but is instead uh, lawful diplomatic activity. Uh, sir, uh, there have been there were, in 2021, four intelligence products. We've only seen one of them, but there were four concerning uh, uh, PRC activities directed at my client, all coming from CSIS. The one that we've been able to see in some unredacted form is the famous IMU from the 31st of May, which I expect you've seen before. It says explicitly that CSIS regards there as being multiple threat actors, including the Ministry of State Security. Uh, are you aware of that, sir? I can show you the document if it helps, but you may be familiar with it already. Uh, I, I am Commissioner, sorry, just, just before the Prime Minister answered, my friend said you, you confirmed this morning that the PRC's targeting of Chong was not foreign interference. I, I'm, and I'm, uh, my recollection is the Prime Minister testified that Zhao Wei's targeting of Chong was not foreign interference. Um, so I, I believe that that was the evidence the Prime Minister gave, but I stand to be corrected by my friend. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we enter the uh, government's lawyers of semantics at this point. So earlier in the day, Justin Trudeau testified that Zhao Wei, you know, that remember that diplomat that was expelled after there was all of this pressure brought forward because of the CSIS whistleblower? No, I do. It's been a few days. Yeah. yeah remember that guy? That one. Um, <laughs> So that guy, so what Trudeau is saying is, oh, well, it wasn't the PRC that was threatening Michael Chong. It was, it was just the diplomat, Zhao Wei. On behalf of whom? Do you think he just decided? Like, what, was he like acting on behalf of like the Tooth Fairy or <laughs> the Easter Bunny? Like, were they conspiring against Michael Chong and, th you know, threatening his family back home in China? So this is the length that the liberals are going to, to try and say, oh no, what happened against Michael Chong wasn't foreign interference. So let's get this straight, folks. Michael Chong votes to classify the Chinese treatment of the Uyghurs over in China as genocide. In response, Zhao Wei decides, oh, well, you know, can't have that, uh, but I'm not acting on behalf of China. I just have a vested interest in, in you know, this vote on, on the Uyghurs. So I'm going to decide to, uh, uh, to to threaten Michael Chong and his family. No. Like, come on. Come on, folks. Um, and, and there's one thing that I, I, I want to show. Um, so what I'd done is I'd taken the whole inquiry, all like seven hours of it, breaks and all. And I broke it up so we could actually take out the video pieces that we wanted um, to use for the show. Now, I found something very interesting um, in Adobe Premiere, which is the software that we, we, were, we use to actually edit our, our stuff. So let me take you, let me take you over to that. So these are two audio tracks. And both of them are of, uh, are of Justin Trudeau. Now the top audio track is where he's talking about something that we can verify to be true. The bottom one 
is when he's talking about the conservatives that are allegedly allegedly um you know compromised or have you know are linked to foreign interference and i found it very interesting how different the audio tracks were when he was saying something truthful versus saying something that we didn't think was very truthful so what you can see is there's all these gaps between what he is saying and then he stops and then he starts and then he stops and then he starts versus a fluid fluid recall of memory that he just continues to talk about so this is something with justin trudeau he's a very terrible liar and is this definitive proof that he's lying no i'm no by, by no means any sort of you know forensic ana uh, analyst or anything like that but when i deal with wave files all the time and i deal with sound and speech and everything like that regarding this channel and then i see the difference in testimony from one question to another and it looks completely different and the reaction from him is completely different it really makes you question so when he's talking about this right now in his recollection there's a lot of stop and starts yeah it's showing that he has to stop for a second and think about what he's going to say next you would probably see a lot of that in my wave files when i speak because I'm not the prime minister of the country. I'm not a trained speaker. I'm still kind of learning. Being a podcaster is kind of new to me. So you're not stopping and starting as much as Trudeau right now. I can yeah, tell you that. but point being, it's when you're having to think of what you're going to say next when you're when you're having to make it up. Which is what we're doing. <laughs> Which is what I'm doing. I'm not reading off a script. I'm I'm not rehearsing something. Like I'm not saying something that's rehearsed. I'm just having a conversation and I'm thinking of what I'm going to say next. So that's where you see those starts and stops. Yeah, and and it's very different when you're asking someone to recall a memory. You're essentially almost like regurgitating a story so it's nice and smooth. So this is very interesting when you look at these speech patterns of Justin Trudeau. I was talking about Jelly. Yeah, um, it's much of a muchness to me, sir. So. My point is this, the Ministry of State Security, you're familiar with that agency? Yes. Is there any such agency in this country? I, I think drawing parallels between Canadian structures and, and the PRC structures is extremely difficult at best. Uh, yes, particularly in the case of the MSS, because it's a foreign intelligence agency and we don't have one of those, right? We have uh, an intelligence agency that focuses on uh, collection internationally, which is CSIS. Right, right. But we don't send spies abroad and we don't send secret police abroad. Isn't that right, sir? I'm not going to speak to uh, CSIS operations, but I can tell you there are CSIS employees all around the world. So, <laughs> all right. So what Michael Chong's lawyer is is trying to essentially get Trudeau to admit is, listen, uh, this MSS uh, agency, this is basically China's equivalent to the CIA. That's basically what it is. Um, we, um, we don't have that in Canada. And Trudeau's like, well, you know, we have CSIS. We don't, we don't send spies and, and secret police all around the world. And Trudeau's response was, well, I can't comment on what CSIS or CSIS doesn't do, but CSIS has employees all over the world. Okay. Um, let's, let's just be real here. <laughs> the reality is we rely on our allies for that sort of thing. Yeah. And CSIS, and it's been talked about in, in the commission before, CSIS gets most of its, its intelligence from our diplomats. That's how... The two Michaels were actually detained right. because one of them was a diplomat and they were getting information from the other Michael to feed back to CSIS. So that's why they were arrested and going to be charged with espionage. So um, let's just be real here, Trudeau. Um, our, you know, CSIS is a valuable intelligence operation. They're more equivalent to like the, the FBI, but they don't have like, um, you know, detention powers or, or, or things like that. They gather intelligence. That's what they do. Um, and they, you know, they, they do good work, but th 
They're not the CIA. Sir, my point is this. The MSS is PRC's... Or I'm, I'm missing something about well, let what me get to it. does. MSS is PRC's equivalent of Russia's FSB or the Soviet Union's old KGB or indeed India's RAW, the research and analysis. Or the U.S.'s CIA. Right. We don't have anything like that. My point, sir, is that if a diplomat, a so-called diplomat, Weizhou, in this country is sending information about a Canadian MP, two Canadian MPs as it turns out, back to MSS, not back to the foreign departments, not back to uh, foreign affairs, but to China's spy agency, that, sir, is not lawful diplomacy. Don't you agree with that? Oh, yeah, I'll say two things about that. First of all, I'm not entirely certain that you understand what CSIS is uh, if, if not Canadians um, agency for collecting intel overseas. Um, and secondly, in terms of the analysis of what Zhao Wei or others were doing, um, I am obviously not an expert in the hierarchies within the, the People's Republic of China's various agencies. But what I can say is, I defer to CSIS's conclusions on these because they are the intelligence agency that provides me information, provides us information on um, foreign activities, particularly um, bad actors. And here we are with the picking and choosing again. So in one breath, Justin Trudeau will say, well, you know, CSIS, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really right. It wasn't, uh, you know, they, they don't provide evidence. They just provide, you know, snippets of intelligence. It's up to me to interpret that. And then in the next breath, he'll say, oh, well, you know, uh, I, do, I defer to CSIS. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, if you don't know, how is it that Michael Chong's uh, lawyer knows the hierarchy of how intelligence is collected by Chinese operatives and provided to their, you know, their MSS, their equivalent of the CIA over there, and you don't. Like, he's well, literally st sitting on the stand saying, I'm not aware of that. Because it's Mr. Van Ert's job to know, because he's been hired as a lawyer for the public inquiry. One could also argue that it's Justin Trudeau's job to know as the prime minister of this country. But... And and as responding to the, the country that is interfering with Can Canada the most. The most. Uh, CSIS's conclusion in this case uh, that we've seen before this commission is that the actions that Zhao Wei engaged in in regards to your client did not constitute foreign uh, interference. Now, I, I am reporting that. I am not the person who made the analysis and determination that it was on one side of the line or others. I have confidence in our agencies that do make that determination, however. Sir, Zhao Wei was not a lawful diplomat. He was a foreign intelligence agent. He was a Chinese spy. Do you accept that? Uh, I accept when I, I, I will state that he was uh, ejected from Canada because he was no longer able to uh, even carry the uh, role of diplomat, which was his overt role, but I also explained that there were situations in which CSIS has concluded that he engaged in foreign interference activities, albeit not towards your client, Michael Chong. So I put it to you that Zhao Wei was outed as a foreign spy, not by your government, but by the Globe and Mail. <laughs> Wow, how embarrassing. That's your job to know this stuff. It's your government's job to know this stuff. It's CSIS's job to know this stuff. But this prime minister <laughs> reads everything. Everything, right? And this is the joke. This is the joke um, that Justin Trudeau wants everybody to believe, that he takes foreign interference so seriously. And I'm not trying to put down the journalists at the Globe and Mail because obviously they did an excellent job of blowing this wide open but it's not their job it's Justin Trudeau's job and he's not doing it well and again why did the Globe and Mail where did they get their information from they got it from somebody inside of CSIS because that whistleblower had seen time and time and time again, and their colleagues saw this time and time and time again, that they kept passing information on to the federal government, and it was not 
acted upon. And do you remember, this was going back almost two years now, but Trudeau and the rest of the Liberal cabinet were out for blood. They were looking for this CSIS individual or individuals who leaked this information to the Globe and Mail. They wanted them punished to the full extent of the law. Yeah, and they keep calling them criminals, right? They keep calling the, the, the whistleblower whistleblower as criminals. And t did they break the law? Yeah, but I'm sorry. Sometimes no, you, you have to. I'm not sorry. Um, if, if you're breaking the rules, but you're doing the right thing, I applaud you. That's called courage. That's called real courage, not this crap they talk about in the media. Um, there is no question that the criminal who leaked the information to the media uh, had a role to play in uh, our decision to expel uh, Michael Chong. But as I said, there were, sorry, expel Zhao Wei. Uh, but there were three uh, factors that went into that decision to declare him persona non grata. One was the escalating uh, tensions uh, between Canada and China where they, despite repeated attempts, uh, refused to decrease or stop their interference activities. Two was the fact that Zhao Wei was indeed, and this perhaps goes to your contention, uh, was engaged in uh, foreign interference activities, albeit not towards Michael Chong. And three, was the fact that uh, his name was plastered across the newspapers made it impossible for him to continue to be a diplomat in Canada. Listen to that last justification. He's almost defending Zhao Wei. He's almost saying, well, you know, the media exposure, that that's really what, what, what broke the camel's back. Um, that made it impossible for him to be a, a, a diplomat in Canada. It was the media exposure, not, you know, the whole espionage thing. Yeah, I mean, not the fact that he was a foreign intelligence officer. You know, he's, he's, Trudeau is saying this stuff because he knows his overlord, overlords in China are watching. <laughs> yeah, and he knows that they're not going to be happy um, if he says something negative towards them. No, because last time that Trudeau said something negative about China in front of the meeting, he, he in was front of the media, he got dressed down by, uh, what is it, their president? What do you think? Yeah, what's Pre the president. Term? President. President. <laughs> Ensicorp reports that CSIS identified Zhao Wei as a candidate for expulsion in 2019, several years before the Globe and Mail story. But your government let him stay here. Nothing was done about him, and you, on your own evidence, had never even heard of him until you read about him in the Globe that morning. I put it to you, sir, that as head of government, you ought to have known who Zhao Wei was and what was going on. Should someone not have informed you about his activities? And this is, this is where this all comes to a head, folks. If you want to wear the big boy pants and you want to sit in the big chair, as Justin Trudeau calls it, the buck stopped with you. So if your government isn't functioning, you can't just say, well, I didn't know about it. Well, then you didn't know about it because you, you have set up a very, very poor organization. Full stop. Yeah, but what do you expect from a guy who was a ski instructor and a drama teacher? And I don't even know if he did anything beyond that. Apparently he can put on black makeup like no other. As I've said a number of times in my role as prime minister, I need to know the behavior of China. I need to know the behavior of India. I need to know the behavior of Russia in regards to Canada, in regards to Canadians, in regards to Canadian interests. I do not need to know the operational details to be able to establish and empower the um, agencies to actually go after that. Now, I need to know the type of things they are doing, but knowing the actual name of the individual, there are such a large number of names that I trust and count on my intelligence agencies to do the follow-ups on the dozens of diplomats that they must keep a close eye on uh, across the country at all given time. This is incredible, folks. I don't need to know what's happening with individuals. I just need to know what China is doing. I need to know what India is doing. But isn't what individual diplomats are doing, especially if they're spies, isn't that like a need to know? Um, that's pretty significant because <laughs> I'm pretty sure that most of the diplomats, and maybe I'm just a naive Canadian, but most of the diplomats that are in Canada from other countries 
aren't spying on us. I'm just Well, they're not supposed to. It's against here. international law, is it not? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. It's espionage, and that's not a good thing. So, you know, the fact that he's like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need to know this stuff. Well, you know, it's no wonder that when he was asked all these other questions in the inquiry, and he's like, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. Well, apparently you've told everybody you don't need to know anything because that's essentially what you're saying here. You don't need to know this stuff. You're, and you're, you're trusting that your intelligence agencies are going to follow up on that. Dude, they've gathered all this stuff. They are following up on it by saying, dude, you need to read this. You absolutely need to read this. Just like Bill Blair. They kept sending him all this stuff. Apparently nobody works in these agency offices. It just sits on their desks for two months before they do anything with it. This is the Prime Minister of Canada. God, I can't wait to get rid of this guy. Me sitting with a list of names of uh, potential uh, problematic people uh, does nothing to help uh, keep Canadians safe in the role that I have. Wait a minute. <laughs> He just said that he trusts CSIS. Yeah, but the other thing is that he's like, oh, me sitting on this list of names does nothing to keep Canadians safe. Well, then why are you pushing Pierre Polyev to get this clearance so hard to get that same list of names? Like, you're the prime minister. If you can't do anything, what's anybody else supposed to do? Well, I, that's the thing. I think he's talking about this list of names, of, uh, but these you know, list of di diplomats. It's hard to even tell what they're talking about the, right now because it's... He, a little he's, convoluted. Well, and I think he's panicking here because Chong's lawyer has him like... In by the, the you-know-what. Yeah, <laughs> by the gonads. So um, he's... Uh, on one hand, he said he trusts CSIS and, you know, that, that's who he defers to. Okay, so CSIS is giving all this stuff. Well, you know, they're supposed to do this. Like, it's never, ever his fault. And it's never, ever his responsibility. And apparently, he doesn't have to take any action whatsoever. That's that's essentially what he's saying here, folks. But that's a classic sign of narcissism, is it not? Oh, 100%. It's never your fault. You know, you're always the victim. You never have to do anything. You expect everyone around you to do it. It goes well beyond particular names because what you weren't told was that there was a debate raging in your government between CSIS on the one hand and global affairs on the other. CSIS assessed that these activities, we see it in the 2021 IMU, were threats to the security of Canada. CSIS conducted a TRM of Michael Chong on the 2nd of May for that same reason. Meanwhile, Mr. Morrison... Excuse me. Uh, the it was not a TRM. It was a defensive briefing, actually. I, I misspoke this morning, so you, you caught me on that. It was a defensive briefing to Michael Chong, not a threat reduction measure, which is apparently an important distinction. But I, well, well, I'll leave that for now. I thought Mr. Chong's evidence was that he was informed by CSIS was a TRM. In any event. Uh, but, that was after, after the leaks. That's what I'm talking that about. Was, okay, that yes. was, I believe that was a TRM. It was the earlier ones that were On the 2nd of May, 2023, that was a TRM. 2023, yes. Precisely. So you've got the security service on the one side assessing that these are foreign threats. This is foreign interference. You've got Mr. Morrison and Jody Thomas, Global Affairs, saying, no, you've misunderstood. This is consistent with the Vienna Convention. What you ought to have known, but were never told, sir, was that there was this debate going on and that it was causing... Uh, disagreements between agencies about how to properly analyze and characterize particular instances. Michael Chong happens to be one. There may very well have been others. Someone ought to have told you that. And so you, I, I want to push back on this notion that we've heard from other witnesses. And Actually, let me push back on that right there, that I testified earlier today that I am fully aware and indeed regularly apprised of tension between, of constructive creative tension of disagreements of perspective between diplomats and spies or between our uh, global affairs canada and but, but sir no CSIS one told on you before before may 2023 that there was a dispute in your government about whether Zhao Wei was acting lawfully you're or illegally right. not about this particular That's person my point. but <laughs> okay i am always aware Two seconds later. You're right. I wasn't told about this one. I, you know, Mr. Van Ert seems like he's highly intelligent and extremely capable of doing his job. I don't know what Trudeau thinks he's doing by talking back to him like that. I don't know what he thinks he's doing by completely contradicting himself. Like, 
Like, here's the timeline. Like, two or three minutes before. Well, you know, I wasn't aware of this stuff. And I, I wasn't even aware of, the, uh, uh, of this guy even existing. And then a couple minutes later, I'm always aware of everything that's going on. Well, you didn't even know who Jawi was? Well, except it, you're right. In this instance, I didn't know. So stupid. Dude, you, you are incompetent. Completely incompetent. About uh, a range of diplomats from many different countries who are engaged in, uh, in questionable activities that we have to make determinations around which ones and when uh, we kick out, knowing full well that as soon as we PNG anyone, we lose diplomats on the other side who are not engaged in subterfuge. So there are many factors that go into when one takes a PNG decision. If we were to, to kick out every single diplomat uh, who uh, who raised uh, concerns, we wouldn't have any diplomats and therefore no representation in any of our adversarial countries. And well, well, maybe there's a good reason for that. Okay. Oh my, okay. So Tani's going to uh, go through what um, he means by PNG somebody, and then I'll go through what he just said. So PNG is persona non grata. It's essentially saying that this diplomat is no longer welcome in the country. Um, we'll say Canada because we're in Canada, but this happens for any country. So essentially you're removing this diplomat's um, status. ability. Yeah, their yeah. status, their ability to be in the country. So they have to go home. There's actually a time span that requires them to leave the country. And, and you'll forgive me, I don't recall what it is. But... Anyways, when PNG is is removed from, or, or when someone is given PNG, or they're, they're per, called persona non grata, they're removed from Canada. But now in that opposite country, so say we do it to Chinese diplomats. Now in China, they also have to PNG an equal number of Canadian diplomats because the, the number should be the same in Canada and also in the other country. In this case, we'll, we'll use the example China. So if you have six Chinese diplomats and you PNG one and there's six Canadian diplomats in China, you have to PNG one to make it five and five. Okay. Now, now that we have that, consider what Trudeau just said. Well, um, if we, if we acted on all the questionable activity of any of the diplomats from our adversarial countries, then they, they would, they would, you know, send our diplomats home. Okay, so wait a minute. You're using the excuse that you're going to allow questionable activity in our country because you don't want our diplomats to be sent home. So you're going to just allow the foreign interference to continue. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why our allies are like, what the hell is going on in Canada? Well, and I'm no expert in international law, obviously, but... I'm asking the question if they remove somebody from Canada, so if they, they make a diplomat PNG while they're in Canada, and again, logic is that they have to make a Canadian diplomat in the other country PNG, why can't they just say, okay, you know what, we'll trade you, we'll give you Sally for Sue, and you can give us, you know, Bob for Tim. Well, and I believe they can, like they can replace them, and, and then, you know, both countries send new people, right? So... And, and maybe, maybe at some point the adversarial countries would get the hint that, okay, well, I guess they're getting good at detecting, you know, our questionable activity, so we might as well not do it. Hmm. And part of diplomacy is making sure that we do have people there, and the price of that is having people here. Now, what our intelligence agencies are constantly doing, as you're pointing out, is uh, keeping an eye, uh, you know, metaphorically or actually on many of these people while engaging in an ongoing dialogue, sometimes a debate, with Foreign, uh, Global Affairs Canada to ensure that we're getting that balance right of protecting Canadians and allowing uh, the work that Canadians are doing overseas in these countries uh, to continue 
to further protect Canadians. Sir, you've characterized this debate as a good thing in your words this morning. Other witnesses have come and called it a healthy debate. I want to suggest to you that it wasn't a healthy debate. Having a debate about what foreign interference means and where the line is between that and lawful uh, uh, diplomacy is fine to a point. But at a certain point where one of your agencies is saying one thing and the other one is saying the other, someone has to come to you as the head of government and say, we have this dispute. It's causing us trouble in operationalizing particular instances, my client's instance being one, but no doubt there were others. Someone should have come to you, the NSIA should have come to you and said, Prime Minister, We've got this difference of opinion. We want you to know both sides, and we need your guidance. But no one ever did that, and so you were left in the dark. But that is exactly why uh, the authority for PNGing someone rests in the Minister of Foreign Affairs' office, and uh, she was very much closer to this debate because it is her responsibility. And when the decision was elevated to, okay, uh, we uh, should possibly and probably PNG this individual, then I was brought in uh, as part of uh, the discussion around that, recognizing that it was her authority to do. Only after the Globe and Mail released the frickin' story. After the whistleblower had to actually whistleblow. Well, that's because they were caught at that point. Yeah, so either Jolie didn't even know about it, which I bet she did, because you're, you're saying, well, you know, this goes up to the minister's office. So then she didn't do anything. Why didn't she do anything? And you're trying to say that there's all this friction going on and this raging debate, and your cabinet minister isn't saying, hey, Justin, just so you know, because that's what good employees do. They let their boss know something. They're not necessarily asking him for 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 them to do anything, but they let them know about it so they're not caught off guard on the chance that they actually have to do something about it. That's the thing. So either Jolie's a terrible employee, which who knows? Maybe she is. Maybe she is. Sounds like she is based on everything that I've seen. Seems like she is. But again, this is a guy that is essentially shirking responsibility. Two seconds before he said, I always know about everything. Except this one. But again, corruption and, and toxicity comes from the top, right? If the very top boss doesn't care, why would anybody else under him care? Sir, when the story came out in the Globe and Mail, Mr. Morrison explained to us that Global Affairs went back, looked at its records, found that, in fact, CSIS had been raising alarms about Wei Zhao's activities years before, but they had never, in, in Mr. Morrison's words, moved beyond the working level, meaning they somehow had not come to the attention of leaders within Global Affairs. Uh, so again, I say to you that w this is a failing of this government to take uh, serious situations and, and serious debates about what's foreign interference and what isn't and actually resolve them. It's all well and good to debate them, but at a certain point, a judgment has to be made and someone has to give governance and guidance about how things should proceed. And that wasn't done until, until we read about it in the Globe and Mail. On the, on the contrary. Third, second of May. Choosing to not act is a judgment. I can't believe he just said that. I, I really can't. Well, that nullifies his whole argument about Pierre not getting the clearance, does it not? Well, <laughs> well, what he's trying to say is um, we've rendered a judgment that Zhao was completely fine until there was political pressure. That's what he just said. Because he's saying, well, choosing to act is a judge or choosing not to act is a judgment. So... so He's saying one of two things. Either we kicked Zhao out because we caved to political pressure, because we can't stand up for the right thing, which in this scenario would be Zhao Wei being fine and being allowed to stay in Canada. So we kicked this person out because we caved to political pressure. Or the opposite scenario, which I believe is the accurate one, which is that we didn't do anything until we got caught with our pants down and then we had to kick him out. Bingo. And he, what he, he literally just said, well, you know, because he's trying to seem competent, right? He's trying to seem like 
He, he's not a bumbling fool that doesn't know what's going on in his, his government. But that's what makes him look like a bumbling fool that right. doesn't look, know what's going on in his so, government. So now he has to double down and basically say, oh, no, no, um, we knew. We knew about this and we made the judgment that it was fine for like three years. Right. Again, so what he's saying is that first scenario that it was fine and he shouldn't have gotten kicked out, but we caved to political pressure and did it anyways because right. we're weak. We can't stand up for our convictions. And like. We and we can't stand up for our country. What he just said completely undermines everything. The fact that it wasn't determined in those uh, previous moments that the threshold for PNG had been met was an active decision. Yes, you can act by PNGing someone, but you can also act by saying, no, we're going to keep this individual under surveillance. We're going to keep the, or, or keep, keep, keep them within uh, what we know. I can't speak to whether or not there is active surveillance on any individual or not, but continue to be aware of this individual and what they are doing because it is, it has a purpose. Finding out when that right line is and when that moment is, is not something uh, to be taken lightly. And it is something that rests on the collected and collective expertise of people who've been working in the security and intelligence uh, domain for uh, years to develop the, the expertise on when that timing is right. So it wasn't a matter of you choosing not to act when it came to Weizhou. You didn't know you had a choice before you at all. But the act is not never mine. Told you. The act is not mine. I do not determine when someone should be Well, the same goes for Madame Jolie. Maybe she you didn't can ask Madame Jolie about Sorry, that. Just a, the, just a moment. I think just wait for him to answer. And same thing on yes. your side, just wait for the question. To we, we go back to debating days at McGill, so uh, there's a little <laughs> bit of back and forth there. My point, sir, was that there's no evidence that this was put before Madame Jolie or whoever the foreign minister was at the time either. It all came to a head because of the leak. And what I'm suggesting, you have rightly said that the leak is criminal. Absolutely right. Should not have happened. But uh, this this debate, which I say is not healthy, but was festering in your government, boiled over with someone taking the law into their own hands, what they ought never to have done, and revealing all this to the world. And only then did you react. There was nothing proactive. That's my concern, sir. Well, the issue with the criminal who leaked this information is um, they got it wrong in what they leaked. I doubt that. So they got it wrong in what they leaked. But three minutes before, he just he, he said, I trust CSIS. I trust CSIS, <laughs> except for when they're running to the media and and displaying our ineptitude for all Canadians. Yeah, and making to see. me look like a royal ass. Right. That's when I don't trust them. Right. Um, but if they got it wrong, then why was Yahweh declared persona non grata? Right. You can't have it both ways, buddy. No, he's backed himself into a corner. And regardless of what's in the newspapers or not, it is incumbent upon a serious, responsible government not to react to partisan attacks or uh, erroneous uh, but uh, uh, salacious uh, headlines but to react on the substance of things. And that's exactly what we did when we, as a government collectively, in the person of the foreign minister, made the determination uh, that uh, it was time to uh, PNG uh, Zhao Wei. So you seem to be suggesting that Michael Chong overreacted in worrying about his relations in Hong Kong. No, not at all. Well, that is when, what you're suggesting. No, I am, I am suggesting that confronted with or faced with a leak that is itself erroneous, that suggests that uh, China uh, has uh, threatened with violence his family, as the inference of the leak and the subsequent headlines were, Mr. Chong had every right to be concerned and even outraged, as did everyone. Uh, as were we by the idea that his family had been threatened with direct physical violence, which is what the leak and the leaker 
um, suggested. We now know that that is wrong, and that is why it is really important that governments act based on actual analysis and actual intelligence and evaluation of that intelligence, and not just what appears, as you say, in the Globe and Mail. Well, sir, I told Mr. Clo this yesterday, and I'll say it to you. Mr. Chong does not share your seeming confidence that his relatives in Hong Kong will never be coerced or threatened or even physically harmed by that state. It is not a rule of law democracy. It is not a state that has a track record of respecting uh, people's freedom of conscience, freedom of political thought. And so these concerns that he has, whether they are based in intelligence that was misinterpreted in the Global Mail or not, are are legitimate and fair and you seem to be yes. wanting to downplay them and I want to no. push back on that. I so the the disagreement now seems to be that oh well you know Michael Chong's family weren't um, weren't threatened with physical violence. He was very specific about that. Sorry. Okay. So if they so if they were threatened with something other than physical violence then it's okay. That's that's the implication that he's basically making there. Um, well, I mean, you could be threatened with we're going to take away your house and take away your job, take away your car. Um, we're going to like maybe you've got a kid in university. We're going to get them kicked out of school. Like who knows? Yeah, there's there's any number of things you could you, threaten a person. You may with. have kids studying abroad. Guess what? We're going to be revoking their visas and yeah. they have to come home. Yeah. Like there's all types of things. And guess what? That is foreign interference, folks. So yeah, um, that and and that's where Michael Chong's lawyer is is going with this, and that's why Michael Chong is so concerned, and that's why Michael Chong was so pissed that he wasn't told about this. Well, because I think you feel, at least if I were in that situation, I would feel like I was responsible, but also that it had been going on for so long. And I wasn't able to do anything because I didn't know about it. Well, and I'd feel betrayed by own, my own government. And right. if, you, if you're asking the question, well, how did Michael Chong not know about this if it was his family? Because Michael Chong made the conscious decision to try to protect his family. He distanced himself incredibly from his family in order to protect them because they still live over in China. Unfortunately, it looks like that didn't matter to the PRC. So this is what you get. So Trudeau, again, trying to downplay all of this. That's it's, really it's, gross. It's disgusting. It's really gross. Like, I don't have words for that. Not downplaying them in the least. What I am saying is as a responsible government, as a, a government that is making decisions about how best to protect Canadians, including uh, and especially parliamentarians, we need to rely on the best intelligence and evidence and analysis and recommendations of our security agencies. And that is what we have leaned on in terms of concluding what threats were there on Mr. Ch uh, Mr. Chong and uh, what uh, what positions and postures we should take because of it. We are a country that leans on its intelligence agencies, not on criminals leaking things to newspapers. One final point, sir. The evidence repeatedly has been that other parts of the government have not relied on CSIS's warnings. In fact, the Minister of Public Safety doesn't even seem to have received them or certainly didn't read them. The same is true of the NSIA. The same seems to be true of the clerk of the Privy Council. So it's all well and good for you to say we're a country that respects our security agencies, the evidence, sir, has been that the security agency has been sidelined and the concerns it's been trying to raise have been neglected and sometimes not even read. I think much of what uh, we have demonstrated through this commission as a government is that we have taken seriously from the very first day threats to national security through creating things that Mr. Chong was opposed to, like the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. But I would suggest if Mr. Chong wanted to be part of an organization that was taking security seriously, he implore his leader, Pierre Polyev, to get a security briefing so he can hear directly from CSIS on the challenges threatening his institution, the Conservative Party of Canada. I'll take that advice back to him. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank, Thank you. you, Commissioner. Thank you.
That was dirty right at the end. Like, that's why I think this is just a like a show right before he calls an election because there was no reason to say that. Yep. Yep. Um, he, and, and that was a slap in the face to Michael Chong. Well, and everything that we have heard about Mr. Chong has been very favorable. Um, we haven't had the opportunity to meet him, but we just hear that he was a very, very highly respected member of the house from both sides. So to say something that rude, that callous towards somebody who is that highly respected, that's not a good look, especially being the prime minister. Yeah, from what we've heard, he's one of the most respected members of parliament in the house from everybody on all sides. Michael Chong, that yes. is. Yes, not Trudeau. No, not Trudeau. <laughs> um, so it's, it, you know, it actually, it, it makes me a little emotional even talking about this because... It is such a slap in the face to a guy that conducts himself with a really high amount of integrity. And, you know, he's one of these people where you you probably don't even want to swear around just because you you would feel like you're demeaning yourself in in, in front of him. Um, So, you know, but the, the, the point being is it's been demonstrated that nobody reads the CSIS reports, nobody cares. And if they did, why do you have whistleblowers contacting news agencies saying nobody will listen to us? This needs to be known. And it makes my stomach churn that Trudeau is calling the whistleblowers criminals. Well, and and you may be wondering, why is Michael Chung, you know, as a lawyer saying they're... Well, because technically it's true. They technically did, it's true. I mean, they are alleged to have broken the law. We don't... No, for sure, because there hasn't been a trial yet, right? Right. Innocent until proven guilty. But they don't know who they are, so they can't bring them to trial. Well, and, but Michael Chong's lawyer made the point. The fact nobody was listening to them, this is why it boiled over and somebody stood up and talked about this. Because guess what, Trudeau? And um, I, I would have liked um, Michael Chong's lawyer to make this, um, to this point, um, to put to Trudeau, that this public inquiry wouldn't have even happened. We wouldn't have even been looking at this if it weren't for that whistleblower or well, whistleblowers. And that's why Trudeau was so vitriolic towards them because he knows he's caught in the noose now and none of this would have happened if those whistleblowers had just kept their mouths shut, right, Trudeau? Well, and he's saying, oh, well, we've been taking this seriously from the beginning. Then why is foreign interference so successful in Canada? You've, you've done all these wonderful things. What have you stopped? And it sounds like the answer is nothing. 